Hey guys, it's Dr. Vidal here at Pure Plastic Surgery. Welcome back to Tuesday Tips. Today we're going to talk about different topics. We're going to have a question and answer. So let's start with some Tuesday Tips question and answers today. It's a common question I see in the Facebook group and it's also a common uh, concern and uh, worry for patients post-op on mommy makeovers, okay? So I wanted to discuss a little bit about that uh, which is one is spitting sutures and two is the triple point opening those two things are very common after mommy makeovers or breast procedures nothing to be worried about or concerned um, and I wanted to discuss a little bit about it so let's start with the first one which is spitting sutures spitting sutures it's a very common thing that happens it usually does happen a couple of weeks after surgery so you're not gonna see it right away you'll see it maybe two three weeks after surgeries when you'll start seeing it and it can happen even a few months after surgery the reason why is you see that I don't pull I don't put any permanent stitching uh, on the outside of their skin to minimize scars but all the stitches are placed inside which are absorbable stitches okay those absorbable stitches last at least six months. It takes time for the body to absorb them, okay? Sometimes the body's healing process, instead of absorbing it completely, starts to express them out of the wound. It's not an infection, and it's not that your body is rejecting the sutures. It's just a normal process of your body getting rid of that material. Sometimes the body just dissolves it and disappears it and sometimes takes it out okay so nothing to be concerned that you have an infection that your that your wounds are going to open up it's just a normal process of healing and you can see it in the tummy tuck scars and the belly button in the breast i have a picture here this is a picture of, that one of our patients one of my patients sent this is the bottom of the areola and this is the vertical scar sorry what is this okay this is the vertical scar and you can see here a little bit of an opening this is a zoomed in picture so that little hole looks very big but it's actually less than a centimeter in size and you can see the little suture sticking out so when what you can do is with uh, alcohol just clean it and then with a clean tweezers just grab the suture and pull it most of the time that suture is half absorbed from, by your body so most of the time you don't even have a knot there and when you pull it, it comes out completely, okay? Sometimes you feel that it's a little stuck still, just take a small scissor and trim it. That's it. This little hole, the skin in the skin will heal in a couple of days. You can put mupiracin or bacitracin or any topical antibiotic ointment just to protect it, just to moisturize it until your body heals it and closes out and that's it, okay? Sometimes you can see it like this, which is a little opening, and sometimes you just can feel it. When you pass your finger through the incision, you start to feel something that it's poking, um, and it's probably a suture trying to come out. If you just let it heal, like leave it alone, in a couple of days, you may see the stitch like sticking out, and that's when you can grab it with one of the tweezers and pull it, okay? Again, not an infection, nothing to be worried about, very common that happens, okay? Where the two incisions meet, sorry, where the two incisions meet um, in the vertical and the transverse on a breast lift incision, anchor type, the two incisions meeting down there is an area where the tension relies and an area prone to health openings and wound healing problems. Again, this is something that usually happens two to three weeks down the line, and you can see it like this, a small opening in that area, okay? Once it happens, again, take a picture, send it through us, through Clara, and we'll take a look. It's treated same way, an antibiotic ointment called Silvadine, gauze changes twice a day, and then it takes a couple of weeks to heal, but usually heals on its own, and that's it. What you can see in the center of the wound is very common, that white, tissue that forms in the center of an open wound it's usually not pus the first thing people think when they see white in a wound is pus infection most of the time and you can see the rest of the skin is not red it's not inflamed 
is just very dry and that white thick tissue in the center of the wound that's called fibrin. It's our body's way of trying to heal a wound. So the process goes, the, the body starts to develop this tissue called fibrin that's like whitish, sometimes it's a little bit yellow. Um, it's a little bit um, not, not fluid, but a little bit thick, okay? And then surrounding that, you see that pink healthy tissue that's called granulation tissue. So the process of the wound healing will go with that cream that I'm going to send you. That white stuff is going to start to dissolve and to go away. And the wound is going to turn everything into pink. That's the granulation tissue. That's healthy tissue that your body is kind of bringing in to heal it. And the edges of the wound will start to contract. That's why it's a slow process. It takes several weeks for everything to heal and close down. But usually it's not infected. Usually nothing to be concerned about. Just local care it takes a couple of weeks to heal. Like I said, it usually heals on its own. Okay. So those two things, if you see them on the post-op course, just communicate through us, through, um, through Clara. That's the best way with pictures, send it to us. We'll right away get back to you with instructions of how to take care of, but it's again this especially this at least a third of patients that go um, on to have breast lifts especially breast lifts with implants because of the tension of the implant develop these uh, little wounds in that area all of them heal without any additional complications so nothing to be concerned about okay so i hope this two little things helped out uh relieve some of the anxiety some patients have after mommy makeover seeing those little things of so a, a couple of weeks in uh thinking that everything was healed and then they start to see those little things and get the anxiety level starts to rise um so hopefully that uh helps with that okay so i do not uh drainless tummy tucks are done by some surgeons um they put a lot of stitches on the inside to kind of bring the skin down uh and attach it i've done it in training and by doing it in training i didn't like the results uh, the results mainly it's because sometimes it indents, indents the skin when you're putting those stitches on the inside and may cause contour irregularities so um, I didn't like those stitches on the inside the other way that some surgeons do brainless tummy tucks is because then they see their patients every two three days and drain seromas so they poke your abdomen and drain the fluid i think that is even more traumatic than just put two drains and let the fluid just drain itself on the little bulbs and in one to three weeks we can remove them so the two ways that people do the drainless tummy tucks it sounds very appealing and very nice obviously i would love to do a tummy tuck without drains but the way of doing it is the one that i don't really like so i prefer to put the two drains one to three weeks we remove them the rate of seroma is very very low the rate of needing um me to put a needle and, and drain any fluid is very low uh, and the contour irregularities or the deformities are not existing because I don't put those stitches in. Um, so that is a very good question and it's actually forever. So a VDL is basically moving fat from your body, your fat, from one area to the other, okay? So those first three months, uh, once that fat is stable and whatever amount of fat it survived, so usually the amount of fat would transfer to the butter, usually like an 80 to 70% is the one that stays. You lose 20 to 30% of that fat because in the process, we need to form new blood vessels, right? That fat that we're moving from one area to the other needs to survive by bringing new blood supply. And during that process, you lose some fat, okay? Um, so approximately 20 to 30%. Once that fat, so the 70-80% that did survive in the butter, that's your fat, okay? So if you lose weight, if you gain weight, it's the same 
reaction or the same result as if you would lose and gain weight and what happens to your belly fat increases and decreases so it's the same but in your buttock okay so now that's part of your buttock fat uh so it's permanent but it is dependent on your weight your activity so it's part of your body now so the way that you treat your body to maintain your shape and maintain your health is the same that you need to maintain your results in your bpl so keeping a healthy diet, exercising, focusing more on um, on heavy weights rather than cardio, because cardio burns more fat. So uh, those are the ways that you try to keep your BBL shape and form longer, but that fat, it's there. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching at YouTube. Uh, my YouTube channel and a Pure Plastic Studio, you can find more videos, educational videos and different topics. Hope you enjoy.